this thing on? Okay, cue exciting podcast intro. We were created carefully by a creative creator who crafted the cosmos. He caressed the soul of the earth when he came. A baby, crying in a crib that darkness could not comprehend. And then he grew and did his most creative act yet. He painted us red, marking us clean with his death. And he rose again, giving us new threads, so you could look like him, friend. Creative and called. You are more like God than you've been told. Welcome to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Hey, the podcast episode you're about to take in is part two of my testimony. Um, If you haven't seen part one, please go back and take it in. Um, I speak about my faith background in part one. Part two, I talk about callings and creativity and how I stumbled upon them. Enjoy. Uh, That would happen. In terms of my calling and creativity, so that's like my, I guess, background in terms of how I came to faith, but calling and creativity, how did I figure out that I was called to do all the things that I'm doing now? How did that come about? Like, what was the journey about that? So uh, growing up, um, I was really good at English in school. Um, I loved to sing and eventually I was singing like choirs and things like that. And um, even though I was good at English, I didn't necessarily have a passion for English. I was just naturally good at it. I'm sure, you know, some of you, you, uh, you have that as well, where in school, there were certain subjects that you were just naturally good at, but it, you weren't necessarily passionate about it. Like, maybe you took it for granted, kind of like me, because you were naturally good at it. That was like me in English, right? Um, we do these essays and I'm like, oh, this is long. But like I would get A's like often <laughs> in doing essays and doing poems and um, doing the different English tasks that we had at school for homework and different things. Um, and yeah, so yeah, as I said, love to sing, eventually sang in choirs. Um, I would write songs as an outlet. Um, and so this was, you know, as I said, during these young caring years in my teenagehood. I would actually write songs in my notepad based on what I was feeling, Um, which is so interesting, right? Um, But funnily enough, I actually went on a creative hiatus. So as mum and my brother got more ill, I went on a, like, I just stopped writing. I stopped writing. Um, I stopped singing as much. I was still singing in the youth choir here and there, but um, I wasn't yeah, I just wasn't like practicing singing as much as I used to. Um, And on top of that, like in terms of the English and poems and stuff like that, like I just wasn't, yeah, as I said, I wasn't, it wasn't my passion. And so I didn't really think anything of it. Right. And um, I had these prayers that I used to pray. One of my main prayers was God help me (laughs) because I was going through a lot. And when I speak, I want them to hear you. And like little did I know that God was giving me those points to pray for my life ahead. So, you know, you guys will understand what I'm saying later by what I'm saying now. I was praying these prayers that I had no, you know, real references to why I was praying them. I, I just knew that, you know what, God, you've been so good to me. I've been able to hear you so clearly. I know that there are other people struggling probably in their teenagehood. Like when I talk to people, God, about you, I I just want you to talk. I don't want to speak because I know that you have all truth. You have all the words to say. You have all the right things to say. Um, And my eloquence and my wisdom isn't going to be the thing that helps people. It's going to be your, your wisdom and your eloquence and your goodness. Um, And so, yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, God had started giving me really uncanny wisdom 
<laughs> and so um, it was really interesting. Like at school, people would always tell me like that I speak above my age. Um, and older people would tell me outside of school, like just in my family and like family friends and stuff, they'd be like, Emmanuel, you talk like you're like 30. And I, I, you know, I didn't, I had no clue really. Um, I would just say what came up in my heart. Right. And, uh, little did I know that it was God, obviously, you know, God, um, preparing me and God molding me and God shaping me, um, for the kind of person that I was going to be to other people as I grew up. Um, and so, yeah, uh, let's fast forward to university now. So first, first year of university was a bit of a backslide. So, um, you know, just like most people, you go to uni as a Christian and you, uh, kind of fall off the rails a bit, maybe because of the freedom, uh, because of the lack of boundaries. And so, yeah, I found myself clubbing, found myself, um, just doing things that I wasn't supposed to do, like clubbing, dancing with girls in the club, um, drinking here and there. Um, I even eventually, like, socially got involved in, like, smoking, you know, weed and stuff like that at uni. Um, yeah, <laughs> really just kind of went off the rails a tiny bit. But interestingly enough, I always had this conviction that I couldn't go too far, you know? So I, I, I still, so for instance, like before getting married, um, I was still a virgin, like throughout, um, throughout university, throughout all my years until I got married, obviously to my wife now. Um, cause yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe just because I gave my life to Christ earlier, the Holy Spirit just wouldn't let me do certain things like I just I would just feel a bit too convicted when it came to certain acts and stuff even though all sin is sin in terms of um spiritual cleanliness but obviously different sins have different consequences right and so um there were certain things that I just couldn't bring myself to do because I understood the consequences of those things um just due due to my um, reading of the word and my upbringing in, in the spirit. Um, so yeah, moving on to second year, second year, I found my way back, um, again. Um, this was due to <laughs> a lot of different factors, man. I think I was just that like, kind of a bit, a bit depressed from first year. I realized that, you know what, the world is not for me. Um, there is more peace in Jesus. There is more joy in Jesus. There is more control in Jesus. Like it's just better over here. Um, in the kingdom of God. So came back to, to Christ properly again in my second year. And that was when God started to call me out for a lot of different things. Right. And so I decided that I was going to really like immerse myself in ministries and immerse myself in, um, in God. And so I joined, uh, this ministry called Pensa, um, in the university of Portsmouth, which is like a Bible study and fellowship. Um, I joined the Portsmouth Gospel Choir so that I would have a worship and yeah, just a worship. Uh, what's this word called? Yeah, so that I'd, I'd have a place basically of worship um, each week as well. And I joined a new church as well whilst I was there and also offered myself to um, help uh, be an usher in the church as well, which is just helping people to their seats and making sure the service runs okay, packing down, setting up, et cetera, et cetera. And I started to really hit my stride, man. Like I started to really feel like I belonged somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and yeah, all of my gifts and stuff started to really start to sprout. So this is when I started realizing that God speaks through me quite profoundly. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know that it was prophecy or that it was prophetic. I didn't, I didn't even know, I, like, I didn't even know about all these terms, bro. I'm, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like when I gave my life to Christ when I was 12 and I was praying those prayers that I was praying, like God speak through me. That's really all I wanted. Like that's all I've ever wanted. You know, I know people get hung up on the different labels, like, yeah, I can prophesy and 
I can give word of knowledge and I can give word of wisdom and um, I can tell you about your future and what God wants for you. And people get so excited about that stuff. And it, it, for me, like, outside of the labels and names, like, I, I just, I really just wanted people to hear God because I knew that God was better than every other person. God is, God is the best. God has the best things to say to people because he's God and he knows everything. So I'm like, why would I want to talk to you when you need advice? Like, why would my opinions help you? I'd rather give you God's opinions because that's what's going to really set you free. And yeah, I started to see that happen. I started to see God um, was, was moving in me more. I was starting to just feel certain things in my heart, like really strongly. And like, if I didn't get them off of my chest to the person that I needed to get them to, they would sit there and like, it would like burn in my heart. <laughs> like it would literally feel like a burning sensation. And every time I would share certain things with people that I feel like God is saying to them, they would literally be like, yeah, I needed that. Yeah, you know, I was talking to God about that yesterday. Or, oh my goodness, how did you know that about me? <laughs> kind of things. Um, which was a blessing, man. And yeah, I was starting to kind of come into my own. Um, and so, yeah, that included different things. Like, yeah, I received the gift of speaking in tongues. Um, and that was a very interesting, interesting experience because it was literally supernatural. We were, we were praying, we were giving Thanksgiving in church. And I literally felt a wind enter the room. Like... You see it in the book of uh, the book of Acts, right? They talk about how a wind entered the room and they felt a wind and then they started speaking in tongues. I literally felt a wind enter the room, come over my body and uncontrollably I'm speaking in another language that I don't know and I don't know what I'm saying. But it feels so edifying. It feels so like, um, what's this word called? Oh, just so good. <laughs> if that if that's the word, like it, it felt like it was building. It was really building me up from the inside, which is an absolute blessing. Um, what else happened in my university? Yes. So during those years, demons also tried to kill me. So I had I had a time where I was, uh, yeah, I was at the height of kind of ministry in uni. I was a prayer leader at at Pensar. Um, you know, singing with the gospel choir, serving at church, ministering, doing those things. And um, yeah, I'd been spending loads of time with God every single day, but I wasn't feeling, I don't know, it was weird. I wasn't feeling God as closely. And so I spoke to him about that and I said, God, I'm not feeling you as closely. You know, I, I want you to show me that you're, you're near me. And so I went to bed that night. And this is why you have to be careful with the prayers that you pray, right? Went to bed that night and... <laughs> oh god showed me i had a dream um that a uh an individual with like an individual with white crazy hair and red eyes was knocking at our door in university knocking at our accommodation and so um i opened the door and i was like who are you why are you here the person looked crazy i'm talking red eyes white pale skin white crazy like electrocuted hair like rags just looking looking like a demon really a, a demon pretty much at, at my door and um i'm like what are you doing here and the demon forced his way into the house pushed me back and is like lifting me up without touching me so you know like i don't know if you guys have seen star wars yeah you know like darth vader when he's doing the death grip. Yeah, bro. This was like a scene from Star Wars. That, that, that's what this is. This demon was using the force, fam. Lifting me up by my neck without touching me. And I'm choking. I am literally choking. I'm looking in my living room. And nobody else, none of my housemates are seeing what is happening. They're just playing video games. None of them are seeing what is going on. And so... I'm trying to plead the blood of Jesus. I'm trying to call on the name of Jesus because, you know, if I, if I say in Jesus' name, then this demon has to get off me. But I can't speak. And so 
I open my eyes in real life and I'm on my bed. And I'm choking in my bed. And there is a figure. I can't see the figure, but I can feel all of, all of the figure's different points, right? I can feel the figure's knees. I can feel the figure's hands. I can feel the figure's like body and presence on me. And I'm being choked by a demon in real life. And I'm trying to say, in the name of Jesus, get off of me. In the name of Jesus, get off of me. I can't speak. And so this, hap this is going on for like a good five minutes, right? I'm wrestling in my bed, in my, in, my, um, in my accommodation in uni. And then I hear a voice from heaven. I literally hear a voice in my room. I believe it was an angel, like maybe the angel that God has assigned to my life. Say, get off of him in Jesus' name. And then I hear a shriek in my room. I hear, ah, in my room. I, 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 won't, even, I won't do the shriek for you because if you're wearing headphones, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit peak. But um, I hear a shriek in my room. And the demon's gone. The presence lifts from me. I can move again. I am literally in cold sweats, man. Um, <laughs> I'm in cold sweats, like all over my face, like all over my body. I get on my knees. I say, God, never again will I pray this prayer of Lord, you're not with me. God showed me that day that God is always with me. If you've given your life to Christ and you're in, you're in fellowship and communion with God, he is always with you. Now, God may not do that to you, right? Like he, he sends different things to his different children. Maybe I can handle, I can handle <laughs> an encounter like that, right? And so for you, it might be that you, you do need that clarity and you do pray that prayer and God gives you clarity in a different way. But for me, that's how, that was how he gave me clarity. Um, he, he allowed for a second his hedge of protection to come off me just to show me that even when you can't speak, Emmanuel, I am always speaking for you. <laughs> I am always speaking for you, man. Um, absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So moving on from there. Um, as I said, I was beginning to prophesy. You know, God would speak through me. Um, I didn't know it was prophetic. I didn't know what prophecy was. Um, but amen, it was happening. Um, and I started to get prophecies. Now, this is when my life started to shift in terms of um, my calling and my, and my creativity. So initially, I wanted to do physiotherapy, right? So I went to university to do sports science, right? Because I was going to do sports science and then do a master's in physiotherapy and then work for a private basketball team because I love basketball, right? I wanted to stay near the game of basketball. Um, but... You know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the case, right? God, God had other plans. Um, and so I started getting all these prophecies from different people at university. I'm talking people that I knew and people that I did not know. And they were all saying the same stuff about, um, about my voice and about using my voice and about ministry and about creativity and about poetry and, and, you know, what I mean? and these different things, um, and so I took them on face value. I was like, okay, cool. You know, that's what you guys are saying now. We'll see, right? Um, and then um, what kind of made it even more of a, 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 like solidified it more is that we were having a, um, a church, uh, what's this word called? A church talent show. And our elder needed a poet right, for the church talent show. Now, remember, I had taken a hiatus from creativity for a very, very long time. The last time I wrote a poem was probably when I was, like, 14, right? I'm now, at this point in uni, I'm now, like, 19, right, in my second year. And I had forgotten that I even wrote. Like, that's how long I hadn't written for. I'd forgotten that I even wrote anything, right? And so I, um, I <clears throat> was sitting in my seat. And, you know, I just started feeling convicted. It was like the Holy Spirit started bringing to remembrance that I'm a poet. Like, I was sitting in my seat and my, I was, my chest was hot. I was, like, sweating under my armpits. 
I don't know why that's the case for me. Like that's, I guess that's just how God talks to me. Literally, I know He's like pressing it on me to do something when I feel hot. Um, take that as you will, right? Um, and so yeah, I'm feeling hot, and I hear a voice, an audible voice, say to me, "You do poetry. Put your hand up." <laughs> so I'm like, huh? and as the voice says that to me, I remember everything i remember all the poems i used to write when i was young um in the midst of like the young caring and my trauma and different things that like, i remember all those things and so i put my hand up and my elder says to me okay cool um great have a poem ready for next week for the talent show and i'm like ah next week that's so quick so i prepare a poem i perform the poem and to my surprise people like there are people coming up to me afterwards crying and there are people telling me that it's one of the greatest spoken words they've ever heard and that they needed to hear it it was a spoken word basically about um returning back to your first love right which um is basically about returning back to god returning back to the person who first loved you before anybody right the person who created you um and Man, there was just a lot of repentance happening, man. Like people, a lot of people were, were, were going back to God. A lot of people were like, no, I needed this. And I think from that moment, I realized, oh, this is why you told me to put my hand up. Like this is bigger than me. And this may be part of what you're actually calling me to do on the earth. And so I, I just, you know, I took that and I said, okay, no worries. And then from that point, um, I got booked in uni i got booked in different places to do spoken word um and since then you know um i've only you know grown more and more and more in in that gift of poetry um and so yeah um going back to the whole prophecies and stuff so yeah as i said getting prophecies about these things as well and god was confirming these things in my quiet time and he started changing my desires a lot started changing my desires a lot you know um i no longer wanted to do physiotherapy i no longer wanted to do sports science and i was kind of in a limbo because i had found i think i i, I felt like i had found like what i was really made to do which is ministry and creativity um and like performing arts kind of things um but I was, I was in sports science, right? And I was in my second year. And so I said, you know, Lord, what should I do? And he said, you know, graduate, like do well, finish, graduate. And then I will show you what you ought to do next. And I said, okay, cool. Graduated. Um, and then I had to begin fasting. I started fasting and praying basically as I, after I graduated um, to figure out what is it that you're saying, God? What is it that you want me to do? What is... Who, who is this person you want me to become and how will this work in terms of money <laughs> and vocation? Um, and um, whilst I'm doing that, obviously the human side of me kicks in and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let me apply, let me apply for some graduate jobs here and there. Like, let me, let me try and, you know, get some money on my own terms. And bruh, I was getting access denied, access denied, access denied from every single kind of graduate job that you can think of. I'm talking entry level, like every kind of job you can think of. And I had a good CV. I had a lot of experience. I did a lot of volunteering um, in, my, in my teenagehood as well, before uni. Um, I did a lot of volunteering in uni as well. Um, and I, I graduated with a 2-1. So I had the credentials but God was blocking all the doors. He was like, no, like, I've, I've called you to, to, to seek my face and find out what you're called to do. I'm not asking you to go for these graduate jobs. And so he started leading me to more medial jobs. I did first aid work. I worked as a steward. I um, worked in my church office as an admin. I worked in a nursery for a year. I worked as an accounts admin, but it's funny because in each of these different places were the different things that I needed to learn 
for me to do what I'm doing now. I learned some like serious lessons in those places. Like God was talking to me in each of those places in regards to the creative um, callings that God has for me and the ministry callings as well. Um, and so I want to encourage you, even as you're listening to me rant and you're listening to me tell you my story, um, enjoy the enjoy the little detours, you know, in life. Because sometimes in those detours, you actually find things that are more important than what you want. And interestingly enough, that's actually a quote from an anime that I really like. Um, but it's it's such a true quote. Like, it's the detours in life, man, where you actually find a lot more of yourself than in the places that you want to go to, you know? And so keep your ears open, keep your eyes open. God has you in a certain place for a certain reason. And it does not necessarily mean that he's forgotten the promise over your life. Um, yeah, sorry, that's random. Um, so yeah, take, take, <laughs> take that as you will. Um, let's continue. So yeah, end up bouncing from job to job, as I said. Um, and you know, whilst I was at this job, whilst I was at those jobs, God was giving me more blueprints of poetry, more blueprints of, um, the clothing stuff that I, I do now and more blueprints of voiceover work and narration and all of these things. Right. And I believe it was because he needed to prepare me for it and prepare me for that work. Um, yeah, to the, to the, to the, to the glory of his name. <clears throat> and so, um, yes, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes so that I don't lose track. Um, so yeah, um, you know, as I'm going through those jobs and God is kind of teaching me certain things, <laughs> Um, I start walking in the direction that he's called me to walk in. So I start writing more poems. I start putting out little poetry videos online, you know, whilst I'm working at these jobs. I start um, uh, just putting my services out there. You know, I start serving people with my gift. You know, I, I started doing these wedding videos for my friends um, who were getting married. And, you know, for some of them, I would do it for free. Um just to practice and just to serve people with this gift that God's given me. And yeah, lo and behold, I started opening up other doors and other opportunities, you know. Um, by, by the grace of God, I've been able to work with so many different individuals, um, such as West Ham, West Ham United Football Club. Um, I've been able to work with National Poetry Day. I've been able to work with uh, Finlandia University in Michigan. Um, I've been able to work with um, a good friend of mine in Michigan as well on the same project, um, who's a videographer. Um, shout out to uh, Two Mile Media. Um, and among many, many, many other people as well. And I genuinely believe that the process of becoming is what enables you to stand in those places. I am not... I don't think I'm like the most qualified person, right? To work with these people and to um, do the work that I do. But I believe that God processed me in his own way. You know, I don't have an English degree. I have not done poetry courses. Um, honestly, I've, I've not done any of those things. I have literally practiced my craft with God in the confines of um, my own home and the confines of my own quiet time and God has been able to do these things. Um, and so, yeah, here are some other highlights and things that he's done. Um, God has been able to use poetry to bring people to repentance on the streets of London at times as well. Um, and so this was when I was um, evangelizing with the Christian busking project. And sometimes I would be called to go on the mic to um, perform a poem um, about Jesus. And, you know, there have been some times where as I'm performing a poem, like people, would literally just stop in their tracks and start crying and feel as if God is calling them to give their lives to him. Like, it's supernatural, man. And I can't take any credit for that. Um, I say all these things to testify of 
what it means to be unboxed, <laughs> called and creative. That your gift and who you are is so much more than what you're doing in your church or in the four walls of traditional church, man. God has called us to be unboxed. He's called us to engage culture um, and to um, bring glory to his name in all of these different ways through our creativity and also um, through our ministries as well. Um, yeah, and so that is pretty much an introduction uh, to the podcast and my testimony. Um, you know, I want to say that, you know, God has done a lot through my life and in my life. Um, and this podcast is the next thing, right? Um, I really do believe that God will meet you in the things that I'm talking about. Um, God will give you clarity in your own journey. God will give you confidence in what you're doing. Um, and I, and I, I genuinely pray and hope, you know, that um, you will leave this podcast and you will leave all the episodes encouraged. You will leave edified. You will leave challenged. Um, and you will leave, what's this word? You will leave feeling just empowered to be an unboxed, called and creative individual um, in the kingdom of God. You aren't strange. You aren't a mistake. Uh, I get that you may feel extremely confused with your creativity and you may feel so confused with your calling and you know, you don't have the traditional route of becoming a pastor or you don't have the traditional route of just being a preacher on the pulpit or you don't have the traditional route of uh, just being on the worship team. And like, <laughs> maybe you're a filmmaker. Maybe you're a director. Maybe you're a dancer. Maybe you are um, an actor. And you ain't acting in church. You know what I mean? It's, it's just like, you don't know how to do this, but you're not a mistake and and god has made you this way for a reason and as we get into the different teachings we get into the different exhortations you're gonna see many characters in the bible that are literally just like you that changed the narrative of culture more than the traditional church members that we see today right and more than uh sitting in the pews more than um being on the worship team for instance not that being on the worship team is a bad thing by the way <laughs> um, uh, we need people on the worship team we need people ushering we need people doing these different things what i'm saying is that you don't have to diminish your significance because of those other things you know and so um i will be vulnerable i will be transparent um so that I may edify you in your own journey to being unboxed, called, and creative. Thank you guys for rocking with me this episode. Um, more episodes to come, more testimonies, more details. Um, you know, I want to talk about how God saved us from a house fire. I want to talk about how God has kept me through the death of my mom, my brother, my niece, my uncle within a three-year span. Um, I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed, man. Um, I have a lot to share. Um, I have a lot of encouragement to give. I believe that God has taken me through some really harsh testimonies and really harsh tests for a reason. The Bible says that we overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. And so I'm here to help you overcome the enemy by sharing my testimonies, sharing the teachings that God has given me um, and helping you to, to navigate as an unboxed, um, called and creative person, called disciple of Jesus Christ in this crazy world. Hey, Eman here. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this podcast episode or listening to this podcast episode. Um, we really appreciate it over here. We're just trying to reach as many unboxed, called and creative people as possible. And with you watching it, liking it, sharing it, and commenting, this really does help a ton. So please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you haven't shared, if you haven't commented, um, or given a review for the podcast, uh, please, please, please do that uh, now if you can. Okay, till next time. <laughs>